All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. So today I'm in a 2015 Audi TT. Now the TT has been around since 1998, which I know is hard to believe. With every generation, Audi just seems to get it just right. It always sells well and it's always a huge success. The first generation still looks great even today. The second generation was even better and they're becoming very cheap actually. You can get a decent one for around about £5,000. Definitely worth a look if you're looking for a budget sports car, especially the TTS. The Mark III came out in late 2014, early 2015, and it had a lot to live up to. Thankfully, Audi stuck to the winning formula and kept the shape very similar to the previous two generations, just tweaking it slightly to make it more modern and bring it in line with their other models. I mean, the front end in particular just looks like it means business. It looks angry and aggressive. It's got the new Audi style grille, the new LED headlamps, which sort of looks like they're frowning, looks like they're scowling. I really like the straight, sharp lines. And I think the rear end looks great too with the twin exhaust. Just looks like a proper sports car. The boot is surprisingly spacious. You can fold down the rear two seats, which is quite handy, but you'd be surprised how much stuff you can fit in there. You'd expect a car of this nature to be quite impractical, but this isn't. So this Audi TT Coupe, or Coupe, is a two plus two but honestly the rear two seats are virtually useless. It's okay if you've got a couple of kids who are very slim, malnourished and short, but anybody else will struggle to fit in the back. They've also got Isofix points for car seats, but honestly I couldn't imagine trying to struggle with a car seat in the back there. If you've got young kids, this isn't the car for you. There's so little headroom in the back that Audi have even put a warning sticker on the boot lid, just in case you've accidentally put Stephen Merchant on the back seat. It just warns you not to slam the lid, otherwise somebody's gonna get an egg on the head. So the front seats are quite comfortable. The sporty bucket seats, and actually there's plenty of room up front. It feels quite a spacious cabin for the front two anyway. The model I'm in is a two litre TFSI, which is a turbocharged petrol engine, which produces 230 horsepower. It's got a top speed of 155. So now I'm on the bypass. If I floor it, that actually pins you into your seat. And the exhaust at the back is just making popping noises. Well, that, that's quicker than I thought, actually. Better slow down. So, yeah, it's pretty quick. I think the interior of this TT is one of the biggest selling points. A few years ago, I had a 2012 TTS. And as good as that car was, and as much as I loved it, the interior felt a little bit dated, a little bit old-fashioned. And this definitely isn't. This feels, this feels brand new. This feels cutting edge. Everything you touch in this interior just feels like it's been built to the best standard as if Audi haven't worried about cost. So this model is keyless, so you get these new style Audi keyless keys, and Audi actually have cleverly thought of somewhere to keep the key. That's the trouble with a lot of cars these days. They go with keyless, but then you end up with it just resting near your crotch or in a cup holder. They never actually give you anywhere for the key, but Audi have thought of that. They've given you this little slot here. Another cool feature of the TT, instead of analog clocks, you get this virtual cockpit. So you get a, a screen there that gives you all your information on it. Sadly though, this model doesn't have sat-nav because on the models with sat-nav, you can have the whole screen as a map, which looks very good. An A3 that I rented earlier this year had that, but this doesn't have it. It's a 2000 pound optional extra and you can't retrofit it. Well, saying that you can actually retrofit it, but it's about two grand. So all the virtual cockpit there is controlled with this big round dial here, which is very easy to use. You get a satisfying click with it. Two, the radio is good too. Taking place right now. Then later at five thirty, Manchester City face Tottenham and boss Maurizio. Pop the only thing that's a little bit weird about this virtual cockpit, it takes a little bit of getting used to because naturally, you find yourself looking here for a screen. You start it and you sort of expect something to pop out, which it doesn't. But even as you're driving along, you glance down to look at what radio station you're listening to to make sure you accidentally haven't put it on Radio Three. And of course, there's nothing there. Anyway, after a few days, I'm sure you get used to it. The interior is very modern, very slick, very minimalistic. Rather than clutter the whole dash with loads of buttons, they've just got rid of them all. They've even hidden the climate control buttons in these vents. So you get these big retro styled like rotor vents here. And the climate controls are actually built into the center of those. So the dash isn't littered with buttons, which all adds to its modern minimalist feel. I like the steering wheel too. It's chunky, which I don't normally like. Although it does have a flat bottom, which I like the look of, but in practice I don't really like. If you try and do a three-point turn, you end up turn the, turning part of the wheel that isn't there. Anyway, that's just a small, small gripe. You get a choice of a couple of engines, a petrol or a diesel. But honestly, why you'd choose a diesel sports car is beyond me. I know you get the extra economy, but honestly, this one's pretty good on fuel. 
you'll average 35 miles per gallon around town, 45 on a run. So you'll average 40 miles per gallon combined, which for a turbocharged sports car is pretty good. Actually, it's not pretty good, it's excellent. So with 230 horsepower, it's plenty of power. And you get the nice little popping noises from the exhaust just to remind you that you're in a sports car. You can opt for Audi's Quattro four-wheel drive system. This one doesn't have it, this one's only front-wheel drive. And honestly, I think if I was specking one from new, I would try and go for the Quattro. Because if you floor it, the wheels will spin and you do get a little bit of torque steer, which I think would be avoided with a Quattro. This car handles beautifully on these twisty country roads. It just feels right at home. The brakes are good too. You can also buy the TTS or they do a TTRS. Now the TTRS with a 2.5 litre engine is, well, it's like, a, it's like a miniature supercar. So the TTS is good for those kinds of people who want to drive everywhere at 100 miles an hour. But for everybody else, this is probably a good choice or a good compromise. You get power, but you also get economy. It does feel very nippy to drive. It feels very light in its feet, very, very agile. It's quite a compact car as well. It's smaller than a five-door Audi A3. So it would be perfect for whizzing around a city centre. Visibility is good for a car of this type as well. You get a little bit of a blind spot on the, um, on the rear pillar there, but overall it's pretty good. The ride's quite firm though. This one's got the optional 19-inch alloy wheels, which, although I think do look great, they do make the ride a little bit choppy. You will be driving this trying to avoid potholes, otherwise you'll be on first name terms with your chiropractor. Listen to that. You know what, I'm really, I'm well impressed with this car. You can switch these drive modes too using Audi's drive select system. So you've got efficiency or um, auto or dynamic. I've had it in dynamic all morning. Honestly, I can't really tell the difference. I like this S-Tronic gearbox too. The steering is a little bit on the vague side, which is true of all Audis, to be honest. It'd be nicer with a little bit more feel through it, but honestly, it's not bad at all. So the road tax here in the UK is only 160 pounds a year, which is for nothing for a car like this anyway. Servicing costs are quite reasonable too. This one's just had an Audi service at the Audi main dealer last week or the week before, and it was under 300 pounds. So I think you could live with that. Prices for a third generation TT like this one start at around 12,000 pounds here in the UK. But for that price, you're gonna get a high mileage manual diesel, which I wouldn't want for any amount of money. For one like this, for a two litre petrol automatic in S-Line spec, with low mileage like this one with 22 on the clock, I expect to pay about 20 grand. But that's half the price of a new one. And with only 20,000 miles on the clock, I think that's a bargain. What I was just about to say was that it doesn't feel as, as raw or as hardcore as a Porsche Boxster S or a Cayman S or a, an M Sport Z4. But honestly, I don't think that matters. I think they've got it just right with this TT. I think this is the best of both worlds. It can be sporty and raw when you want it to be. <laughs> but most of the time, it's just a very civilized, very nice car to run around in. I think it looks great. It drives great. The interior is excellent. Running costs aren't too high. And I think if you look after it, I think they hold the money quite well. So what's not to like? I've read a few reviews that all say it's a little bit forgettable and underwhelming to drive. But I have to say I disagree. I think what Audi have made here is the perfect everyday sports car. If I've got one criticism, it is, how can I say this in a fair way? It is a little bit clinical and a little bit humorless. But I think that's because Audi have perfected everything. There are no design flaws. Since the first TT came out, lots of people have just dismissed this as a hairdresser's car, but it really is so much better than that. I think that's just the words of jealous people, to be honest. I think for a lot of people, this TT is all the sports car you'd ever need. But for a few people, it just misses the mark ever so slightly. You could buy the TTS or the TTRS if you're a little bit mad. But I think for everybody else, this would do the job perfectly. So thank you once again for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. If you've got any questions, leave them below in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you. So cheers guys. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.